Hi, it's Roberta Hill here from UphillOnline.com and in this short video I'm going to show you how to create unique and easy to remember passwords for all of your various accounts and logins. I promise that I can do that for you. This is something that I learned about two and a half years ago and I've been using it ever since with great success. And I've been meaning to create some sort of video or article to explain the process to other people because I think that one of the hardest things that we have is this message we're getting all the time about passwords and making sure that they're as complicated as possible. And what we end up doing, of course, is creating perhaps one complex one that we can remember. But it's not unique and it's really not that good for various bots that are going through and looking for the typical tricks that people play. So you might be wondering why I finally got around to creating this myself for you. Well, as I mentioned, about two and a half years ago, I started flipping all of my username passwords over to this little method methodology I'm going to show you in a minute. And with great success, it's been wonderful. But I confess, I did not change my Facebook password. It was just I don't know, I was going into it quite often, it was set up on my own iPhone, and I just couldn't be bothered. And sure enough, a couple of days ago, I was locked out of Facebook, and I got a notice saying someone tried to get into my account from a, an IPS that they didn't recognize, and was it me? And I looked to see where it was coming from, somewhere in the States, as a matter of fact, and I knew it wasn't mine, and so I thought, okay, time to update that, and time to let my readers and other people also how to know this little trick. So here we go and I'm going to explain it to you and I want you to know that this is not the first time that people have tried to breach my um, my security. It's happened over the years. I've had to change a few accounts before I knew this. It has not happened since except as I mentioned on Facebook which I had not used this technique. So what you're going to find out first of all is that in general speaking, people are going to say that you need six to eight words uh, or letters, letters and words minimum. In, uh, in combination. But the truth is, a really good secure password should have nine. Nine letters, characters, or what have you. That's a heck of a lot to try and keep in, in mind, especially when you think that it has to be letters. Usually has to have some a capital, and it usually has to have a symbol. Alright, so how are you going to have something that's simple and unique every time that's got letters, capitals, symbols, and numbers? All right, well, let's start. We're going to go and talk about having three parts to the password. These three parts can be in any order, but I want you to be consistent or you're not going to remember it. So you can use part one, part two, part three, but do it all the time. So what are the three parts? Well, we're going to have a part that is certainly capitals, and we're going to I'm going to show you how to do that one. Then we are going to do one that talks about numbers. And these two part, the capitals and the numbers, are going to be the same for every password you ha have. The fourth one, though, is going to be the unique part that we're going to use to identify which particular site you're talking about or which particular um, uh, URL or bank or whatever you want to do. So these are the three parts and they're consistent. So you could put numbers first, then capitals, and the unique part, but I'm going to follow it in this particular order to show you, and I will in fact give you some samples as we go along, so don't worry about that either. Let's start with the capitals. Here's the nice part. There are a couple of things in the world that are have abbreviations of capitals. So for example, you could have the USA. There's three great capitals. And it has to be something for you, specifically. It could be a um, uh, YUL, which I believe is the uh, either Toronto or Montreal, I can't remember actually, the uh, airport code. So you can use, uh, you could also use, uh, as I said, a country code. You could make it a little bit short, or Ac Arkansas, if you want to do a, it's two, ideally three, but it can be two. Here's the trick to get your nine letters. If you're going to only use two letters in your capitals, then you want to use a little few more letters in your others. So I like to go with three. So it could be a city, a country, a state, um, or a, uh, as I mentioned to you, uh, um, 
airport you get the idea on that one so you those are some of the simple but it has to be something that's unique or specific to you that you're friendly with then the numbers now the numbers are a little trickier we should pick up something that perhaps it was an old uh, part of let's say four digits uh, digits from an old your first uh, phone number or something like that it could be a previous um, I wouldn't use your SIN number but a previous postal code so you're going to get a number of numbers from that. So you think of a number that you want, part of a phone number that you know and remember, a previous postal code. I'm not necessarily recommending a uh, uh, a birth date uh, particular, but maybe you have a date that is uh, you know very significant, uh, but it's not something that is going to be maybe it's your parents' uh, four digits uh, birth date, but something you're going to know. So you want to keep that in mind. So now we've got capitals that are ideally three digits and maybe a four digit number. Now symbols become a little bit trickier as we go along here because as you know symbols are uh, how do we do symbols? So we need to get I need to get a text box. Okay. So we have the letter one sometimes is very effective is I like to use one is as an explanation. We could use two. Uh, two could be a question mark. Three could be, no, I'm not sure what three could be, but we could have uh, four could be, I like for four I use the number sign. Something that's unique as I said to you. Seven, this is a sign that's quite popular. Perhaps eight, which is the number over eight, is uh, an asterisk. So you can work those out a little bit uh, more uh, as you move along to figure out what makes, uh, makes sense for you for the various uh, letters and what have you. So you now can change the numbers. Now what a lot of people will do is they change an A to the at sign. Now that will work uh, as long as you're not using a word that you normally would be using, a real word. So it ha can't be a real word. So if we were using something that uh, um, like uh, USA, instead of using the USA, you could do something like that. So, in your symbols. Alright, let's go back now. The unique part. So first of all, you've got your th your capitals, which are about three letters. Something you know, postal, uh, sorry, a country, a city, uh, a state. Then you're going to the using capitals. Then you've got the second part is your uh, letters, something that you remember. And with that, you want to add uh, a symbol because sometimes they want two or three symbols. You can change that. And then here's the unique, unique part. And this is your lowercase because you've got your uppercase. So the second one is your lowercase. So if you're using, let's say, the first and the last part of the same. So if it's Facebook, it would be Facebook. If it was Twitter, it would be Twitter. Oops. Yeah, that's right. If you were logging on to LinkedIn, I'm just using some of those, LinkedIn. You could use, um, and by the way, it's going up to the uppercase, but I want to remind you that you want to do lowercase on this. All right. Uh, you could do the first and second, so it would be FA for Facebook. Again, be consistent with whatever you want to do. So if you're going with that format, you want to do Twitter and you want to do LinkedIn as example, lower cases. All right, those are your two, two letters. So now we have the three parts again. I'm going to give you some samples. I'm currently, for example, I right now I live, uh, I'm living in Paris. I wouldn't use anything current, but I am going to use uh, a current one here. So par I live in Paris and I happen to know that the airport for Paris is Charles de Gaulle. So those are my first three letters. Then I'm going to actually give you my uh, 75015 is my uh, uh, excuse me, is my uh, postal code. So I'm going to change that and make that a slash and I'm going to make this an exclamation mark and then I would be using first two letters for Facebook. So there would be my symbol and if I was going to do uh, continue to do that slash 50 explanation point 5 and LinkedIn and Charles de Gaulle slash 50. This is actually quite a nice one, but I won't be keeping it because now you know it. 50 and Twitter because I'm going to be using the first two letters. 
So that's how I would go through and use something like that. Or if you're in the States, we talked about, perhaps you go USA. Let's try that, USA. And you, uh, your old fold number was one, two, three, four, but we're going to change that to this, and you always remember what that is, and you're going to choose to do the last two letters. So, and if we're right, if I count this, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you want to make sure that you ideally have nine. So what have we done? We have matched all of the letters. We have minimum two capitals, ideally three, four or five digit number, I've used a five digit number, changed two of those items to symbols, and we have used. And let me remind you that you could do this the other way around. You could go Facebook, uh, one, two, three, four, at USA, US, at. Change that. So this would be simply the same thing in the reorder. But I want to remind you again, be consistent for your password. So the elements that you're going to be using here, which is the numbers and the capitals, will always be in the same order. And then whatever your two letters uh, identification for your URL, your site, will always also be in the, lower, in the, the same location. So hopefully, Thank you for paying attention to this, and I hope that you've uh, found it useful, and I strongly encourage you to play around with this and do it and come up with one. As I said, I use one that I've been very happy with, uh, and it's working extremely well for me. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me directly at roberta at wghill.com, or visit me online at uphillonline.com. And once again, thanks very much.